church how y'all doing this morning for this is the day that the lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it amen how many of y'all rejoicing this morning how many of you are excited about what god is doing in your life how many of you are excited about what god is doing in the life of your neighbor See, that, that's when you know you're a mature Christian. When you just celebrate what he's doing for you, that, that's, that's, that's selfish. But when you celebrate what God is doing for your neighbor, that, that, that means the blessings are in close proximity. So, so, so if you celebrate, you might be able to participate to, in what God is doing. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan, when they came to the land of Canaan, Abram, Abram passed through the land of the place at Shechem to the oak of Moriah. And at the time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward Nunagib. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. We want to thank God for yet another day and thank God for covering my family. We just returned, as many of you, um, spring break vacation with the kids and, and we just, we thank God for traveling grace and mercies and, and refueled and rejuvenated and recalibrated and any re you can think about we needed this last week off, and so we thank God for the privilege to stand, even in the midst of still trying to get back to a sense of normalcy in life. Amen. Amen. And text lets us know, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you, you will be a blessing. Just want to preach this morning as the Spirit shall guide from the thought called to a blessed place. Called to a blessed place. You, you ought to be grateful this morning here at Tabernacle because you are in a blessed place. Amen. You are in a blessed place. There, there are many churches around the country that are still doing virtual service. When I say that, I'm not saying as how we're doing it here, live and virtual. There are still some churches that are just strictly doing virtual 
service. You're in a blessed place. In the original Star Trek series years ago, look, y'all, I can't start the sermon. In the original Star Trek series years ago, the theme was to boldly go where no man has gone before. In order to go to a place you've never seen before, you must consider there will be some risk factors. Will the spaceship maintain throughout the journey? This, this earth for the tabernacle, with that that I'm standing in right now, the scripture says it, 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 it will eventually dissolve. I, 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 in, in about to turn 50, there are some old basketball wounds that I'm dealing with, um, Sherelle, that over the years that I've been playing since PAL in the Boys and Girls Club. And so there, there, there's some wounds, there's, there's some bruises that... So there's some risk factors as you journey, as you go to, to the place where you have no earthly idea where the Lord has, has told you to go. Will, will, there, will we have enough fuel to propel us through the journey? Those are some things that when you look at Star Wars or you watch Star Wars, War, Star Trek, if you will, you never saw the spaceship refuel. It just, just flew throughout the universe. But, it, but in this life, as, as you journey, as the Lord has commanded you to go to a place, it is imperative that the Christian, on this Christian journey, that we refuel often. In, um, in, in some instances, not just every day, but even throughout the day. We must, we must refuel. There, there are some risk factors if you do not refuel because there's the potential that you could be operating on empty. And I don't know about you this morning, whether it's ministry in your career, raising your children, your extracurricular social activities, what have you, no matter what you're involved in, it is it incumbent upon you that you take time out to refuel, rejuvenate your mind because uh, you don't want to find yourself operating on E. And in the Christian, we, we use the excuse when we know we're tired and we use this old cliche deep. We say, man, I'm just operating on grace. Well, Paul says, um, if you abuse the grace, you, you, you don't continue in sin because grace may be a bound. In other words, don't use grace as a way of saying that I'm operating off of something that God has given me. Don't, don't use that excuse. No, get you some rest. Grace may not run out. But your body will tell you when to shut down. So as they travel through the universe, will the crew continue to have faith that Captain Kirk will guide them to the place where no man has boldly gone before? Do you trust your leadership this morning? <laughs> That, that your leadership will take you to that place. And, and, and that's where we find ourselves in the text. Yet with those risk factors to consider the enterprise launched into space to encounter the unknown. Yet the original characters, some of them are still alive. Captain Kirk is 90 years old. He went in the real space about a few months ago. I just, I just don't understand that, why somebody 90 would want to go up in space because there's a potential you might not um, survive the trip, but, but God blessed him to, to come back that way. He was only there for about, about two minutes. But, but at the end of the day, do you trust the captain of your ship? 
I'm not talking about your husband. I'm not talking about your wife. But I'm, I'm talking about the Lord himself, the, the, the one that directs you, the one that we look to for strength, the one that the psalmist talks about in, in the 121st Psalms. I look to the hill from which cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Do you trust the captain of your ship? In our text this morning, a man by the name of Abram, Received the call from the Lord that would change, charge, and challenge him to go to a country, to go to a place without a compass, without a map, with no navigational system, no specific instructions. The only thing he had to work with was God's word. See, Abraham hadn't enlisted into the military because in the military they have one area of specificity that you must learn whether you're enlisted or an officer is that you need to know how to use that compass to navigate throughout the area in which you're responsible to recon or better yet to engage in battle. He had no military training. All he had was God's word to go. When God called Abraham, understand this, he called Abraham, when you look at verses 12, the A clause, verse 12, the A clause, now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country. You must understand the, the, the religious dynamics in which Abraham came from. He, 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 when he called Abraham, understand this, he called Abraham out of an idolatrous experience because his father was an idol worshiper. So, so not only did he call him to go to a great place, he called him to salvation. And salvation comes because God calls in grace and sinners to respond by faith when he asked him or better yet told him to go he didn't ask questions he just went because he understood what he was leaving was imperative that he leave it in order to get what God had in store for him God, God called Abraham out of idolatry Abraham didn't know the true God because he lived in earth. He is a city who, that worshiped the moon God, Nanar, but yet God graciously called him. Now, if you, 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 you're honest with yourself and you turn, flip back the pages of your salvific experience, God called you from something too. Matter of fact, he called all us from something. Um, I think the hymn writer says it best. When I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me now safe. Am I? He called all us from something. How God called Abraham? Well, the glory of God appeared to Abraham. Acts chapter 7 verse 2 for your scripture reference. The revelation of God's glory would have shown Abraham the vanity and the folly of idol worship in earth. Who wants to worship a dead idol God when he has met the living God? I'd like to say anyone with good sense, as my grandma would, 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 would say, would be able to deduce the difference between an idol God who can't do anything than a living God who can do all things. 
Why did he call him? He called him in his love. He was concerned about his salvation. That's why God calls us out of the darkness into the marvelous light because you, you and I are his best creation. We are the best thing that he has to offer to humanity. When he went down all his creational acts, when he got to man, he didn't just say we were good. He said we were very good. It is important to him that we are in relationship with him. So why did he call him? He called him because he loved him. God's purpose is a blessing to the whole world. The life of Abraham is an example for all Christians who want to walk by faith and not by sight. He said go. Go, go in. Open the business, and you, 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 you still talking about you working on, working on your business plan. He, he said, go back to school. Yeah, I know you're about 50, but school's still open. He, he said, go. He, he, he said, go and reconcile the relationship that has been torn for 20 plus years. He, oh, and, and notice, he, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'll go. Because when you get there, it's already fixed because he's the one that sent you. Three things, and I won't keep you long, that we must understand about Abraham's call to a blessed place. Number one, it was a covenant, a covenant, a covenant, a covenant was established. Look, verses one through three. Now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred. That means you got to leave some folk. Y'all do know this morning. Everybody can't go. Where God is trying to take you. I'm, 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 I, 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 Y'all ain't hear me over here. Um, everybody, no matter how much you love them, cannot go everywhere with you. Especially when God has told you to leave them where they are. He didn't say neglect them. He said leave them because you know your prayers can travel a, <laughs> a distance. In other words, you can love people from afar. I got family members. I love them from afar. I would love to see them once a week, every now and then. But at the end of the day, God says everybody can't be with you where I'm trying to take you but you can still be a blessing to them what we'll discover in the text no matter where I send you here it is here it is here it is he, he, he says this covenant has a lot to do with just fellowship just sitting at the table eating together being in agreement it, it, it means to bind or fetter. It, it, it is a commitment. It is a commitment. It, it, it's, it, 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 it has, watch this, there are no stipulations to this covenant relationship. It's not if you do this, I'll do that. No, no, no. It's not conditional. It's unconditional. Yeah, yeah, because when you establish a relationship with God, he's established a covenant with you that he will keep. It is to a lot, it's to share. It is, God didn't give Abraham reasons or explanations. Hear this, he gave him promises. He didn't give him... <laughs> Excuses, yeah, yeah. Excuses, excuses. He, excuse. Some, some of y'all, some of y'all heard excuses. Yeah, yeah, y'all. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all know what them excuses. I, I don't, don't want to put nobody on 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 front street. But but those excuses are tools used by the incompetent. Therefore, those who use them never amount to anything 
God, I don't know if I should go because you didn't give me a compass or you didn't really tell me where I should be going. You just said, leave everybody, leave my family, leave, leave the possessions. You just told me to go. I really, I don't know if I can do that, God. Yeah. Excuses or tools are used by the confidence. Yeah. See, 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 see he, he didn't. He didn't give an explanation. He gave promises. The missionary mandate, what's this, does not begin in John 3, 16, Matthew 28, chapter 18 through verse 20. It begins with God's covenant with Abraham. He told him to go before Jesus told us to go and make disciples. It's a covenant. Let the church say covenant. Covenant. Yeah, yeah. When you in covenant someone, it is an agreement. That verbal stuff, you know, and, and you know, there's contractional agreements and things of that nature. But a true covenant is one that you make with the Lord. Because watch this. People break contracts. People definitely break verbal commitments. They they forget the minute you, you made the commitment. That's why they run a verbal. Because it's only between you and the other party and no one else heard the agreement. Yeah, I'll come, I'll come work on the house and yeah, I'll charge you a certain amount and uh, you just cash, now, they tell me, cash, now you cash out me the money and then I'll come, no bro. You come do the work. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I'll show you the money. But, but you come do the work first. And when you start on the work, I may give you half, but when you finish, I give you the rest. There's a covenant, but also there's a compromise. First steps of faith are not always giant steps. In the Marine Corps, when you learn how to drill and you get to one place to another, as I was serving, they, they call them short choppy steps. In other words, you ought not to try to go anywhere too fast. You, 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 you can't. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but yet you got to understand that the whole purpose of this race is to finish. So when God says go, don't just come out the gates like you're running the 100 or the 200 meters. No, come out the gates as if you're running a marathon because he says go, but he doesn't say run. Why y'all not just dive into relationships without guidance? Y'all not just leave, leave a job because the grass looks greener on the other side, but you've been there 20 plus years um, pinching on the line and all of that, but yet in the midst of this, uh, you see what somebody else has and you're listening to other people. Girl, you've been there 20 plus years. You ought to be tired. No, no, you ought to be thankful that when you do retire, you got a check coming every two weeks and you got a pension plan that you can go talk to a financial planner and shift over and then you will have invested uh, you'll be vested for the rest of your life don't just let anybody speak into your life when you know what God has told you to do you must fully obey it's a compromise and I challenge you I, 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 sometimes when I, I see this text he says leave your country, your kindred, and your father's house. But Abraham didn't fully obey him. He took family with him. Now, even in inductive exegesis, that is the analysis of the text when you study, um, this family is his immediate. Yeah, his wife. Mm-hmm. But he took his nephew with him. And you know the story with, with, with Lot, yeah. Yeah, because at some point in the journey, he had to let Lot go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, was, there was some skill. No, you take this and I and I'll take this. You go that way. Well, God did God told him not to take anybody anyway. And sometimes, y'all, I mean, he, from the pulpit to the pew, sometimes we want to keep folk close to us. We know no mean us no good. 
and you're wondering why it seems like you're carrying a load that you should not be carrying. Well, you're carrying an unauthorized load. God knows what you can bear. Trust me, beloved. But, but, but yet oftentimes we want to keep people attached to the hip. We love them. They related to us. They, 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 they good to us sometimes. But at the end of the day, guess what? You can't take care of everybody. When God has told you to take the journey. Because when you get to that place, as you dis we discover in the text, when you get there, he says, I'm going to make you to be a blessing to others. Watch this. That doesn't mean those in close proximity to you because if you're in a position to bless somebody to that measure, that means you'll be able to bless those you had to leave. He, he, watch this. He took family with him, and when you take family with you, you're going to have some old problems you got to deal with along the journey. Yeah, 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 old problems become new when you're on the journey. Abraham's father kept him fully for honoring God, and his nephew Lot created problems for Abraham until they decided to go their separate ways. See, there are some things in life we can avoid if we only listen to God and not lean upon our own understanding. The, 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 the there, watch this, was the agreement that Sarah and Abraham made got them in trouble twice. Watch this. She's just my sister. But she really your wife. <laughs> now, I, I just couldn't imagine, ma imagine me taking Deidre anywhere. Oh, She's just, she just my sister, man. No, sir. No, sir. Not, not after 24 years of marriage. I, I just couldn't. Not, not after a day of marriage. She, she's my sister. Because watch this. He was, watch, you, you were sent on a journey by God. You stepped out on faith, but fear set in. When adversity struck, you thought, watch this, that God's plan was going to be denied. No, it was simply just being delayed for a moment. So you wanted to manipulate God's process. And in turn, you lied and said your wife was your sister twice. That lets you know, even though, although God has called the man of God or the woman of God to do great things, there are still some flaws that God is trying to work in and through us in order to get us to be the best he's called us to be. Here it is. He steps out on faith, but he says his wife is his sister. Life of faith demands total separation from what is evil and total devotion to what is holy. Abraham was often tempted and sometimes he yielded. The only man that I know that didn't yield was Jesus. The Bible says he was tempted at all points. Yeah, but, but, but he never yielded because we know yielding to temptation is what? Somebody been reading their Bible. Um, 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 God wants us to stand firm. And not yield to temptation because yielding is seeing God test us in order to build our faith and to bring out the best in us. But the devil tempts us in order to destroy our faith and bring out the worst in us. When we walk by faith and lean and trust on the Lord, the devil cannot have rush out in our lives. And we know, we know, if we're honest with ourselves, we had some of those moments. And, and, and thank be unto God that we're saved and baptized through water and fire, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we, we, all that good stuff. And, and when we do make those mistakes, the Holy Spirit convicts us in that moment. Now, now, now when the Holy Spirit stops convicting you, you need to check your walk with the Lord. Because there are something, watch this, the Bible lets us know that if we continue in sin, grace be abound. In other words, don't abuse the sin, abuse the grace that God has given you. We have some flesh moments, but it's best for us to focus on God and allow the flesh moments to 
decrease while the spiritual moments when the enemy tries to attack us supersedes what the devil wants us to come out of our flesh. There's a, there's a covenant that he established in verses 1 through 3. He tells him what he's going to do for him, watch this, and to anyone who tries to harm him. You, you, you wonder why folk, uh, stuff happened to people. And you still trying to figure it out. They were messing with you. Yeah, family or foe, supervisor, CEO. They, they, they were messing with you. He, text says it right here. If, if they dishonor you, I will curse. Keep doing you for him. No, no matter what other folks say, if it's his way, it's, it, it's, it's the right way. Yeah, let, let, let them hate and all that. Let, let them try to stop what God is doing in your life. Pray for them that he don't give them what they deserve. But at the end of the day, in your journey, in which what God, while you're walking to the place where God has called you to go, He's right here in the text. If they mess with you, God's going to deal with them. There's a covenant. There's a compromise. There's some stuff. There's some people that you got to let go on your journey. As much as you love them, they're like parasites sucking the life out of you. And while you're on the journey, you can't enjoy the journey because you're carrying dead weight. But pastor, I, they, they really need, no, they need the Lord. But, but, but I, I, you know, I, it's, I feel something, I'll pray for them. Don't let people play on your emotions and then watch this. You, you 60 and what you should have accomplished at 40 is still staring you right in the face. And you know what happens is somebody else is doing what you should be doing. If God told God, well, he has, go, go to that place, and when you get there, you, you'll be so blessed that you'll be able to bless everybody. So, so there's, a, there's a covenant, there's a compromise, but then also there's a commitment because when he calls you, you got to be committed to the journey. You know, we in the military, you raise your right hand in law enforcement. Um, you got to sign the, the law enforcement oath. You got to quote the law enforcement oath. All, all those are like commitments. They're not, they're not, they're not true covenants. Because <laughs> we break them. Yeah, yeah, y'all watch the news. So, so at the end of the day, so, 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 so at the end of the day, there's a commitment when you say I do. Yeah, I, I let people know now, if you want me to marry you, I'm not doing that. I'm writing my own vows. And if you write them, I got to read them. And then all of that, let's back it up. I got to counsel you. I'm not just showing up without counseling you. See, 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 it's, it's a commitment. It is ordained by God. That's why you can't take it lightly or loosely. It is a covenant that he's established and it's been ordained by him. And it's a commitment. Look, look, at, look at verse 4. So Abraham went. Let the church say he went. As the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old. First thing you notice, sub, sub point here, that in verse 4 and 5, faith brings us out. He went. He left the place where God told him to leave. But, th but then, verses 6 through 8, if you look at the text, text lets us know here in the text that Abraham passed through the land to the place of Shechem 
to the oak of Moriah. And at the time the Canaanites were in the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. Faith brings us out, but also faith brings us in. Because if you never go, <laughs> you can never walk in. Yeah, yeah, if you never call them folk to follow up on the application that you put in. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you did the application online. And there is a number down there. Yeah, if you're watching Facebook Live, YouTube, and they sent you an email. Mm -hmm. They're not coming to pick you up at your address to say come in because you took it took a little faith to do the application online but it takes a little bit more faith to follow through with the initial action of filling out the application I'm trying to help somebody here or watching because my, my 22 year old, he, 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 and I, and I, he, we, we, we have a good relationship and I, we check on each other every day. I check on him, he check on me. But so he applied for UPS. I saw UPS at the um, military um, um, job fair for the TPC. I was out there recruiting. And, um, and so I took a video of the kiosk and the senior vice president um, and sent it to him. I said, they hired. Yeah, they hiring, they hiring, so, so, so they hiring, they hiring, so, so you need to go fill the application out, and she says she's going to call you on Monday. Well, today is what, the 20th? And, and that was, that was a little less than two weeks ago, and he starts on the 22nd. I, I, well, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason. I'm saying this for a reason. If you activate your faith, uh-huh. If you understand that faith brings you out of your comfort zone, it'll bring you in to the place that God calls a blessing. And trust me, he need them checks. And going on the 22nd, he'll be walking into the place. And watch this. Watch this now. And, and, and this is what I told him. The man that said, call, he said, I started in the truck. But now I run security for all facilities in the city. See, faith says you got to take some short, choppy steps. And if you got to get into a hot truck, throw up some boxes, 20 years down the line, you'll be able to bless somebody because somebody else put you in a place to be a blessing. I told, that, I told him, I said, boy, I had five jobs when I met your mama. <laughs> Faith brings us in to the place. The Faith brings us on. Notice the verbs. Verse 12, 4, he departed. Didn't say he sat still. He departed and went forth. I'm almost done. First, chapter 12, verse 5, he passed through. See, some of us are afraid of the passing through moment because in the passing through, there's going to be some obstacles. There's maybe some detours. But you got to stand on who told you to go. God says when you get there, you'll be not only blessed, but you'll be a blessing to others. Look at the verbs. He passed through. Verse, chapter 12, verse 6. Removed. Chapter 12, verse 8. And he journeyed. Kept on going. Some of us no hair, gray hair, all your hair. You still on your journey. There's still something that you haven't tapped into that God promised you. 
that's why I don't get it in today's society. Folk, I, I saw I saw uh, a lady, um, um, University of um, Chicago Loyola. I love NCAA basketball. Um, don't call me why North Carolina playing. Anybody playing right about now? Don't call me unless it's an emergency. Um, <laughs> 102 years old, and she doing the pregame speech. That lady walking in her calling. And, 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 and what bothers me in, in this society, now that some of y'all might, you know, if you're 65 and, you know, you, you well taken care of, you got a good retirement and you chilling, sipping on lemonade, and you go to Crystal's or Bono's and you just sit there and you talk or you got a certain place where you like to hang out, God bless you. Because you took care of your resources. But there are some folk I'm looking at right now. I see if I go in the community, go in the store, they still working. And they my mama age. But then I hear people, man, I'm, man, I done, I done did my time, but yeah, you still struggling. It, 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 and he journeyed. I see school teachers, I graduated in 1990. And the athletic director at Inglewood is still there. About to hit 40 years. It, he, 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 and he journeyed. Doc, why are you still working? Man, I'm 49. Why wouldn't I be working? And he journeyed. God kept Abraham moving. That church say moving. Moving. moving to meet the challenges that will keep Abraham calling on the name of the Lord. Don't, don't you know in your journey when you feel like you're up against adversity, call on the name of the Lord. He, he knows you. He has you on the journey. See, that's the key to keep moving in faith. When facing the difficulties of life, watch this, and I'm done. Everywhere he went, he built an altar, pitched a tent. How many altars have you built? You, you, you don't realize there are places you've been. There's things you conquered. And what you don't realize is that there are more people remember them than you. Because that was your altar. I, I run into people all the time. I'm done preaching. And they'll tell me about stuff that I did that I forgot I did. They'll, 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 they'll bring things to my remember. Man, you remember something? I said, man, I'm... Then I walk away amazed because there was an altar there. That, that there, was, there was a place where God says, I got you. And the altar, watch this, the seed that was sown was for those who were watching you. And you don't realize, <laughs> you don't realize there are people who are watching you that'll tell somebody else about you. Let me tell y'all something. I'm done. You be, let it, we all stand into our feet. We all stand into our feet. We. There, there is no secret that God is in the business of using others to give you <laughs> free public relation services there are some things that you've done in your life you don't realize that some blessings that are coming your way are literally the altars that you established 
while you was blessing somebody else. One of my fraternity brothers who used to be my pastor, <laughs> he, he shared something with me. He said, man, out of all those brothers, he said, you was the only one that got 100% of the votes. I'm not pastor in the church. I'm not the CEO. I'm just a little old boy from 13th and Moncrief. You don't know who you impacted. Everybody got titles. Titles are what they are. But when you Cars when you're doing the work before you even <laughs> become a part of something. Your reputation speaks for itself. Stay on the journey. It's not time for you just to let the young folk do everything. You pave the way. You open doors. You don't block them. But you stay on the journey. Because you're the ones who, <laughs> who have set the example. Truth be told, you're the ones that put the pretty paint on the wall. It's, it's uh, luxury vinyl tile. Stay on the journey. Because if you get off the journey, <laughs> they won't have anyone to follow. Abraham was 75 years old. Now, when I think of 75, I'm law enforcer, right? If you get a DUI, DUI is still your record 75 years. Yes, yeah. That, that's for free. But he was 75 deep when God said, go. 75 years old. And he didn't watch this. He didn't say, I got rheumatoid or off riders. He didn't say, I got C5, C6. He didn't, he didn't say, um, uh, um, um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm short. I'm, I'm asthmatic. He didn't give any excuses at 75. He just said, go. He didn't say, Lord, why, why are, are you calling somebody 50 years younger than me to do this? He said, not only am I going to call you to go to a blessed place, but even in your old age, you and your wife, y'all going to bear a child. Stay on the journey. The minute you stop, you stop living. 